Good morning everybody, I am Tomalika Chakraborty, Assistant Professor of Guru Nanak Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Technology and today in this video I will be discussing the importance of plagiarism in academic writing as a part of enrolled students of academic writing course in SWAM NPTEL. The next most important question is that what is plagiarism and why it is important, why we are so concerned with actually plagiarism. Now in the era of research and development, a researcher or an academician are actually excel, they ex actually excel because of the paper they publish, because of the books they publish. So all of a sudden if it happens that they are caught in an offense of stealing somebody else idea, then that will be a black mark in their career. So that is why everybody should know that what is plagiarism and that is why I am making this video. And moreover, plagiarism in true sense is copying and borrowing, but in disguise, it's a much more serious offense. So, we should know the true meaning of plagiarism, which says that according to Merriam Webster online dictionary, plagiarism means to steal and to pass off the idea as your own. Moreover, you are using somebody else resource without giving a credit then that is a plagiarism to do literary theft and to steal somebody else idea modify it and calling it as your own is also plagiarism so if you are doing this we are actually stealing somebody else novel idea somebody else work and that is plagiarism and it should be avoided the next question is that does words and ideas can be stolen? Is it true? Words and ideas are actually inanimate <laughs> objects. Then how can it be uh, stolen? The answer is yes, yet could be stolen. Why? According to US law and laws of some other country, production of original novel idea is considered as intellectual property right. That means somebody's intellect right somebody's new idea right and it is being protected by copyright laws so that is actually of course words and ideas can be stolen for my viewers for my viewers i want to tell that you should detect that whatever you are doing whether it is plagiarism or not so for that i have given some idea about plagiarism in this points like converting someone else work as your own is plagiarism copying a sentence you have copied one sentence and you just change the word then that is also plagiarism you have put a particular sentence and you have forgotten to put the quotation mark that is also plagiarism you have put a particular idea from one paper and you have forgotten to cite that is a big mistake and that is plagiarism and you have cited that particular work but it is a wrong information then that is also plagiarism. Like in this slide you know that I have put one picture of plagiarism to show everybody to stop plagiarism but if I would have not cited it that the source of this picture then I would also have been plagiarizing so that you need to understand. Now let us move on to the classification of plagiarism. So the first one is your direct plagiarism which is also called as your cut and paste plagiarism. What is that? You know when an author or when a researcher is actually copying word to word right and putting it into another paper then that is cut and paste. Like I have given an example at the bottom you get to see that I have copied one particular sentence from the source turn it in. Attention, changing the words of an original source is not sufficient to prevent plagiarism, right? And I have just modified it. That is, one has to remember that changing the words of original source is not sufficient to prevent plagiarism. You know that one in bold is actually the patch which is just being cut and paste. So that is basically your direct plagiarism and that is a researcher's top priority to stop. Mm -hmm. The next one is your self plagiarism, self, one's own. So when I am talking of self plagiarism that means you have done some work and you have just taken that particular work and put it into a paper but you have not informed your guide, you have not informed the co-author 
then that is a strict offense, criminal offense and that is equivalent to plagiarism. Even if you are taking your own work, your data of one paper and putting it into another paper, you have to cite your paper. So, if you are giving citation, it is absolutely okay. If you are not giving it, that is equivalent to your self-plagiarism. The next form of plagiarism is your mosaic plagiarism. The word suggests mosaic means patch. So, what you are doing over here is that you are taking one phrase exact without any quotation or you are changing a sentence, right, modifying a sentence but the structured sentence, the same structured sentence, the same meaning in the same place that is also plagiarism. You get to see in this example, I have put one, took one sentence from turnitin.com and you get to see most cases of plagiarism can be avoided by citing resources. I have just written one can avoid plagiarism by citing resources. So, this is a phrase, but I have not put it into the quotation mark. Even one in bold is what acknowledging the sum of the material has been borrowed and highlighted the information to chalk out the source. So, this is exactly what is written over here, just some of the uh, other paraphrasing has been done. So, that is also plagiarism and that is a part of your mosaic plagiarism. Next is your accidental plagiarism. Why do you have face an accident? When you are ignorant, when you are unaware. So, accidental plagiarism means if you are by chance paraphrasing a sentence, mistakenly forgot to quote the sentence, forget to cite a source, then of course it is your accidental plagiarism. You are doing it by accident. So, how can you avoid it? You can avoid it if you know what is plagiarism, what are the classification of plagiarism, then only you can avoid such kind of accidents. Next, I will just want to explain to my viewers that what are the consequences of plagiarism. Destroy student's reputation. You have a student and you know that that student has just copied and pasted. What will be your impression? Your impression will be that there is no novelty in the student. So, of course, that is a destruction of student's reputation. Professional reputation, you are a professional, you are an academician and all of a sudden you have got an offense of being plagiarizing, then that will be a black mark in the career. Nobody will believe your work, nobody will try to publish your work. Even those people who are actually having PhD registration can get cancellation of PhD registration. So, that is destruction of professional reputation. Academic reputation, now in academic reputation means though it is for the student as well as for the academician. In academician the same thing, this may result in termination of the job and loss of reputation to the students, to the other colleagues etc. So, this should be avoided. Legal repercussion, of course, I have told you that most of the ideas are protected by copyright law. So, if you are copying it, right, then you have legal consequences, you can go to the court, right. So, because it is equivalent to a criminal offense. Monetary repercussion, you have to give some monetary money for that, right. For example, lot of uh, years before when Samsung copied iPhone, Apple iPhone, the company actually complained about this particular copying of the software and Samsung had to give a lot of money to the Apple and moreover have to ban that particular mobile phone from the market. So, these are some of the consequences of plagiarism of copying blindly. So, in this last slide, I will request my viewer to study more about plagiarism, to go into various softwares and see that what is, how to detect plagiarism, right, and how to reduce the percentage of plagiarism in your work, right. And ultimately, I will request everybody who is listening to it, a researcher, academician, a student, to stop plagiarism, to stop copying and generate your own novel idea. Most of my uh, slides are being taken from NPTEL course academic writing. They have provided us with lot of lectures and lot of notes. So, from there my slides are being taken and I have told you that some of the uh, words and some of the sentences are taken from turnitin.com. Even I have taken some sentences from authenticate.com. These are basically the tools by which you can check your plagiarism and you find out the exact percentage of plagiarism in your work, right. So, I will request you to also go through this soft, those uh, websites like turnitin.com and authenticate.com. 
As a student, my feedback is very important as suggested by the academic writing course. So accordingly, my feedback is that the lecture videos are interesting, short, right, informative, engaging. Webinars, I have interacted in the webinars and even the course materials are very simple and one can easily understand from the course material. So I will, I will uh, tell all my students to actually go to this particular course, read about this course because that will give them the true sense of writing and academic writing a research article or any type of academic writing in your near future. Last but not the least, I want to thank academic writing course team of SWAM NPTEL, the professors, right, the mentors for their vibrant lectures and also the course materials are so nice and moreover the total academic writing team who has made this particular interaction between the between the enrolled students with the SWAM NPTEL individuals so easy. So I will acknowledge, I will thank academic writing team of SWAM NPTEL.